I've been a professional software engineer for about 15 years, and I started off with about over $100,000 in student loan debt, and now have made millions over the course of my career. And I wanted to go over my entire 15-year career in 10 minutes to show that my path wasn't pretty, and if I can do it, then essentially anyone can do this. So I'm gonna give my history in yearly chunks. I wanna share my salaries, what I worked on, what industry, what I learned, and also like this just mistakes I made throughout my whole career. So my hopes that in this video, people can see that everyone's paths are different. And I also hope that people can learn from the mistakes I made and have a smoother journey than I did throughout the last 15 years. So although I've been doing this for 15 years, it all kinds of starts when I graduated high school in 2004. So without further ado, let's start there, 2004. So in 2004, I graduated from a really small town in Iowa where they had no real advanced classes no programming classes, basically no technology classes at all, but I knew I wanted to go into school and do computer science. And the only reason why I wanted to was from a movie called Hackers from 1995. Hack the planet! Hack the planet! Yeah, that's, that's the only reason I went into school for computer science. So for college, I actually went to the University of Iowa because I heard their computer science program was easier. So after four and a half years, in the year 2008, I graduated with the following things. No web development experience, no database experience, no internships, no summer jobs, no class projects, and about $114,000 in student loan debt. Basically, I chose mostly to party and bartend the entire time. Oh, and also, if you'll note that 2008, kind of an intense year. It was the year of the 2008 financial crisis. That brings me to mistake number one, not taking it serious enough to get real experience while in school. So that being said, 2009, what do I do to make sure that I try to break into the industry? I did exactly what you think I did. Did I get an internship? Did I apply to 100 jobs? I did none of that. I married my girlfriend. I worked 60 hour weeks bartending, put physical money into a shoebox, and then backpacked through New Zealand and Australia for an entire year to avoid actually getting a job. So that brings us up to 2011. Now, I did not have any experience, as I mentioned earlier, so I got a job as a software analyst, which did not require a bachelor's degree, but I needed to get some experience anyways, and that paid me about like $40,000 a year. This was at a defensive contractor, and I think I was doing mostly Java and C-sharp work. That brings us to 2012. I was working a lot in uh, C-sharp and Java, building internal tools, but the work was really slow, so I did a lot of stuff in the evenings. I wrote an app in Java to help with personal finance, just to help do something that made me a little bit more excited and challenged me a little bit more. So it was also good to have a personal project that I had a passion for to help me learn how to pay off my loans and drive me to make a proper app. I also spent a ton of time with a certification called uh, the CISP and uh, it actually did nothing for my career. I learned a lot, but there's another mistake is if you're going to get certifications, make sure that they're applicable to the work and they will actually help you. Otherwise you're burning a lot of, lot of steam. 2013, my wife and I moved to a bigger city and I got my first web development job. First time I ever touched HTML and JavaScript professionally. And I was making around 72 at that point, but then I, immediately left that job after four months and started with a startup remotely uh, in San Francisco. And that was my introduction to Ruby on Rails. 2014 continued and it was more deep learning of Ruby on Rails, pair programming, information security. And this is the year that I had some of the greatest learning curves of my entire career was that deep dive into actually doing a lot of web development. That year, the salary was around 95K, I believe. So in 2015, I left that job to break into the world of freelancing and got my first contracting gig. However, I got in over my head and that's another mistake I had was not knowing my limits and speaking too confidently about things that I honestly didn't really know how to do. So later when the company laid off about 80 people, I was one of them, I was gone. But I quickly found a new job at Pivotal Labs working on Pivotal Tracker. So that year was all about React, Rails, Backbone JS. And the average salary for that year was somewhere around 105 to 130,000. I should also take a second to say that in 2015, I started taking on as many side projects and like moonlighting projects uh, whenever I could, but I did not include those in this video. I have another video where I talk about freelancing, um, where I explain that more, but most of this entire video of my 15 year career 
is about uh, these full-time jobs. Now we're at 2016. I just continue working at labs. I kept on doing that same work and learning more and more. And then 2017 rolled around. At this point, I had two kids, and I needed more flexibility outside of the uh, strict 9 to 6 working environment. So I left to go work at a consultancy to work under the Disney Imagineering department doing purely React code. Super interesting work. And the salary was around $140,000 there. So here's 2018, and we're talking about layoff number two. Disney defunded the whole project, and they cut all the contractors, and I lost my job there. This one hurt worse because at this point I had two kids, so I panicked even further. However, I was lucky to quickly find a job through a friend working for an insurance company doing more Ruby on Rails, React, and Angular work. At this point, I was able to lead a new project and see that launch into the production world, and the average salary was around 145 at that point. 2019 and 2020, I was approached to join a startup, a fintech startup, doing mostly uh, Ruby on Rails and React code. It was a high stress environment, but with high stress came a lot of learning. But some of the biggest value was being able to learn a lot about the company and working on the money side of things. You really got to see how the business worked and how the money flowed through. So that was some of the biggest learnings of that job. I think the compensation throughout that whole time was 165 a year. Yeah, that sounds about right. Do you remember 2020? Yeah, the pandemic. That was probably the hardest year of my life. I had a third kid in month two of the pandemic. So parenting, teaching, feeding, and raising kids in the middle of a pandemic at home while trying to work full time was still the hardest year of my life. My comp was still 165K a year minus my sanity. 2021, I actually ended up getting a negative review that I wasn't performing well enough during the pandemic. I mean, that's fair, but I also, my feelings were hurt and I was resentful. So I approached one of my clients that I've been working with uh, in the evenings occasionally and asked them if they could take me on full time as a freelancer for the first time. And they said yes. When they said yes, I quit my job and I dove into being a full time freelancer for the first time in my life. This year was mostly Rails and Angular and some React, and it totaled to be about $215,000 that year. That brings us up to last year, 2022 where I kind of continue to work uh, as a full-time freelancer and I worked through some agencies, some independent client work, a consultancy, and through some other small odd jobs here and there. That was another year around $220,000, $225,000 that year. And it was Rails, React, Angular, Python, Django was the first time, and some, some team leadership as well. So that brings us up to date to 2023. And I continue to do freelancing work full-time and most of the learning I'm having is being able to continue to grow my network and trying to find leads in this job market. So a lot of my learning this year isn't so much about the technology, but it's about like kind of building a business around that and continually making sure that you have work, you have network, you know how to market yourself and talk to potential customers so that you can grow and continue to have work. So in summary, there's a couple of things I wanna share. Some of the biggest lessons I've learned is to grow is to constantly put yourself in an uncomfortable situation where you are forced to constantly learn and try to adapt and, and, and provide value at your job. Inherently, that's another lesson about software engineering is that it's a, it's a learner's mindset field. Like you're never going to know everything and you kind of have to come to terms with that. And so every single year, every couple of years, five years, you have to adapt and learn new things. A lot of people are scared about AI. But largely, you have to just adapt to these technologies and use them for your own benefit and, and grow with the industry. Another big lesson in my career is that you should always have the confidence to at least try, to at least apply for that job that you may think you're unqualified for, to at least negotiate for a higher salary that may be more than you think you deserve. It's always worth trying because you can always push the envelope. And the only way you're going to know your ceiling is when you try to hit it. So... I've been told no many times for, for jobs, for negotiations, for a lot of things, but the only way I was able to grow is to push myself into those limits as much as I can. And also, I hope people learn that like you can make mistakes. You can go down the wrong path. You can try something out and find out that it sucks, and then you go somewhere else. That's fine. Not everything is clearly defined and, and easy to find that next step. So thank you so much if you guys lasted this long in the video. Go ahead and put a, a pig in the comments because I think that would be funny. Also, don't forget to subscribe and like, and I have more videos about career growth and uh, software engineering and 
various other things, but uh, either way, I don't know how to end this, so uh, that's it. All right, bye.